Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, still pushing for 50,000 this year. To be part of the big three in the United States, you must hold a substantial amount of the available market share, have a leading service offering, and to go alongside that, a pretty mammoth operation. Whether it is as simple as an employee base or more complex factors such as routes and or fleet, all these are fundamental parts of making up a business and a large one too. American Airlines remains one of the most notable global companies today, lucky in its name that it is genuinely American Airlines. Since its conception, it has been a leader, and now in the 21st century, with competition being left, right and centre, it has navigated some pretty turbulent times such as the most recent global pandemic, to remain a leader in its own right. Founded in the early to mid-1900s, the airline would commence operations in the 1930s as a union of more than 80 companies. Thus, its birth was hardly straightforward, if you will, and it has been indeed through many ups and downs, whether this is world wars or all that that followed. Even before the 1930s, however, if you do want to track back, you'll be able to understand that American Airlines existed before to a certain extent, again, this being in different forms and under different names. During this period, it would help develop key aircraft such as the DC-3, which would act as a flagship at the time. As the decades continued to roll over and we saw more technological advancements hit the industry, the company would prioritise these advancements and look at bringing them on at any given availability to advance not just their fleet but generally their day-to-day -day network. The growing demand also for faster, more reliable transportation, many would argue propelled American Airlines to the forefront. Now, this is a lot easier said than done, but, but things were certainly improving in this era. As touched on, American's official launch would come only decades before the actual commercial jet age, and that is something that we know transformed the industry, and American was well positioned to meet that. Nowadays, the American Airlines route network is pretty extensive. It leverages a considerable fleet to its advantage and thus calls several locations home. Unlike other global airlines that, say, might have one home in several focused cities, at American Airlines, you've got critical hubs of Dallas-Fort Worth, which is their most significant. Paired with the likes of Charlotte Douglas, Miami, Los Angeles, New York JFK, and for its other more regional airlines or even mainline operations, there are other locations around the United States with a substantial amount of importance placed, whether this is New York LaGuardia or Phoenix Sky Harbor. Again, this is to name just a few that play a role in the American Airlines network. But when you factor in just how important they are to the day-to-day -day flying within the country, you'll know that American Airlines calls many other airports home, if you will, too. The fleet. Well, American Airlines certainly doesn't know small, and in a similar fashion to the other two primary airlines within the United States, their network is expansive. In a similar fashion to Delta and united over the pandemic, the realisation hit that streamlining needed to occur, and older aircraft types that were just not necessary anymore, but maybe also inefficient, needed to be removed in favour of the next generation of aircraft from either Airbus or Boeing. What was the perfect time to adopt such a strategy? Well, when demand plummeted to zero and you could rely on fewer aircraft to begin with. American Airlines' mainline fleet has Airbus and Boeing aircraft present, each hugely important in different ways. It doesn't necessarily rely on, say, just Boeing planes or just Airbus. When measured by active units, the most significant aircraft type is a commitment to the 737-800. However, on the other side of things, the A321 series is quickly becoming also one of the most critical single-aisle fleet types, and it's certainly proven its worth working alongside the 737 series for decades now. The airline flies not just the A321CO, but it's also begun acquiring the next generation A321neo over recent times 
systems, which comes with substantial efficiency gains. Some of these have even come across from Alaska Airlines, who, as we know, retired the aircraft in favour of becoming an all-Boeing airline, and many would argue that for Alaska Airlines looking to remove some of their A321 Neos that were recently delivered, the primary taker would be American Airlines. On a more broader scale, America needs an adequate fleet to make its wide-body operations happen. This part of the business, however, sees them rely on Boeing jets. With the 777 series featuring extensively, and this works hand-in-hand -hand with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. American Airlines has opted not to have any Airbus wide-body aircraft feature in its fleet at this point. It also is yet to commit to the 777X, as we know a plane that has not been certified, but also interestingly, has not yet been ordered by any US customer. Several of these airlines have looked towards existing planes to power their fleet. Take a look at United Airlines and their extensive usage of the Dreamliner and all three variants using them in different manners to achieve what they're looking for for long-haul flying. While the mainline brand is certainly crucial, the airline has a broader network through American Eagle that operates into more regional locations. These flights will connect as touched on smaller towns with their hubs, and if required, facilitate onward travel. This is a familiar business model to have, and it's seen quite extensively in neighbouring Canada, and even as far as Australia too, with the Qantas Group utilising regional brand Qantas Link for facilitating services to hubs or focus cities of the mainline, and then potentially connecting for onward travel. In the future, there's a lot American Airlines can be excited about. With several new aircraft arrivals continuing over the coming years, these will be crucial to network expansion and on a more fundamental level, ease stresses. The A321 XLR is certainly going to be the one in focus for the short term, with this set to arrive in the not too distant future. And the single aisle range capabilities of this plane are set to be important. Like I said, it will ease pressure on existing aircraft types, but what it will also do is open the door for new opportunities for the airline in either serving existing or new markets. If it's serving existing markets, well then existing wide bodies that may have say been traveling to these destinations can be redeployed to either new routes completely or potentially enhancing existing operations that need more capacity. Internally, the airline will of course continue to also find ways to become more efficient, whether this is how it operates daily or just how it goes down to hiring employees. Sustainability will also be an important focus as the airline looks to meet goals that have been set out for it. That is going to conclude today's aviation news recap. If you have any thoughts, well, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It certainly does mean a lot. Please do take care and do also be safe. I will see you next time for your latest industry developments. And flight, and we'll fly.